Thank you very much. I'm very excited to speak to you today about Canada's first regional material flow analysis focused on food waste in the Guelph Wellington area. My dad grew up in Malta during the Second World War. No supply ships could get to the island. The people were starving. There was no food to be had. Because of that, my dad was adamant about not wasting food. He used to watch me peel potatoes so he could tell me if I was taking off too much peel. I'm loath to peel potatoes today because I still feel him looking over my shoulder and he's been dead 10 years. In Canada, over 55% of all food is wasted. When food goes uneaten, it wastes all the water, soil, nutrients, fertilizers, labor, and other resources that were used to grow process and transport that food. Even if we wasted just a quarter of this food, it would be responsible for 6% of GHG emissions. These emissions are so significant that if it were a country, it would be the third highest emitter in the world. We know food waste happens along the food chain, but a large proportion still happens at the household level. Dana Gunders, head of ReFed, says, in our households, we're wasting between 15 and 25% of the food we're buying. Imagine walking out of the grocery store with four bags of food, dropping one in the parking lot, and not bothering to pick it up. That's essentially what we are doing in our homes today. So we know loss is happening all along the food chain, and the material food flow study looked at this loss from production to disposal. This project was initiated through the Smart Cities office in Guelph, Wellington. David Messer, the ED, spoke this morning about the amazing initiatives coming out of this office. One of the very cool projects that they worked on in the Smart Cities office with Provision Coalition, whereas they looked at food byproducts, they took some of those byproducts and upcycled them into a circular meal. So they took spent grain from Wellington Brewery that was sent to Eureka Solutions to feed insects. Then those insects were sent to Azumi Aquaculture to feed locally raised trout. Then they harnessed the trout poop and they sent that to Smoyd Potato Farms and they used that as a natural fertilizer. That spent brewery grain was also sent to a baker to make sourdough bread. So the bread, fish, potatoes and beer they created a full circular meal. We served it at three different restaurants in Guelph Wellington, and it really raised awareness with our local population on circularity. The partners for the Food Material Flow Study, which was generously funded by the Green Municipal Fund, were Dylan Consulting, Metabolic out of the Netherlands, and Professor Mike Von Mosso from the University of Guelph. This study really helps us to understand which resources flow into the system, where they end up, and where there is waste. So over the course of the study, we acquired over 80 public and proprietary data sets to give us a uniquely detailed view of the elements of our local food system in Guelph and Wellington. This was the critical starting point to build the right strategies to reuse these resources and build actionable business cases that would help us to transition our food system to a circular economy. I know David showed this slide this morning and when people see the sand key diagram, they usually either geek or freak because it's a lot of information. But a material flow analysis is really just a way of visualizing how these resources are produced, consumed, and disposed of in each food sector. So if you look from the left of the sand key diagram, the thickness of those lines represents the quantity of food flows, and the different colors represent a different type of food in the system. So I'm going to demonstrate with my prop here a particular food flow with my basket of russet potatoes, a starchy root vegetable. So if we start with 24 potatoes at production, which I have here, we were going to lose about seven in the processing phase. So I've taken out seven potatoes, and then we're going to lose another three in the manufacturing phase. 
And then we're going to lose another one in the distribution phase. Then we're going to lose another four in the retail phase. And then we're going to lose another one in the household phase. So I have eight potatoes left in my basket. And that's at the household level. So then we're pro we could lose up now to 25% of those that are going to end up either in composting or disposal. So if we lose that 25% from the 24 we started with, I'm down to six potatoes throughout the food chain. Downstream food waste from household and businesses is dwarfed, though, by food waste upstream in the system, which is largely from inadequate storage and packaging and unplanned loss in the processing phase. Addressing unnecessary food waste is really a significant opportunity to bring our food system within planetary boundaries. The findings from this material flow analysis can serve as a starting point for selecting circular strategies and building a roadmap to close these waste loops. We identified the hotspots, we engaged with local stakeholders to create and rank interventions, and then we developed three unique business cases to pilot best in class outcomes. The three potential business cases include expanding food and food waste collection in the industrial, commercial, and institutional sectors. We already have a pilot project underway where we collect food waste from the commercial sector, and David spoke to this this morning. We have about 45 businesses participating, but we really want to increase that participation and scope for economies of scale. The second two is to enhance food and food waste redirection platforms. We want to make food redirection platforms more accessible to better redirect food waste to end users that can consume, reuse, upcycle, or reduce, uh, recycle this food and food byproducts. The third is to harness the energy potential of food waste by evaluating anaerobic digestion. We want to determine the biogas generating potential when different feedstocks are made available. These potential case studies will turn into pilot projects that will involve working with local community partners, technology providers, and other stakeholders. These three business case opportunities are anticipated to reduce the quantity of food sent to composting or disposal facilities and instead be consumed or used for higher beneficial uses. This project is no small fry. Governments are at the receiving end of the linear take make waste economic model. At every step from farm to fork, significant waste is produced. Without any intervention, this waste ends up in city and regional landfills and has a negative impact on our residents, our economy, and our environment. We believe that cities and local governments are the right place to start. We need to be the catalyst. We need to be the change. It's abundantly clear that cities need to play a role in shaping a food system that is more regenerative, healthier, and less wasteful. As municipalities, we don't need one person reducing waste perfectly. We need a million people reducing waste imperfectly. Thank you for all your interest in our innovative study. Thanks very much.